Everybody. This is the Bright Start Foundation, Parenting in a Pandemic. I'm Natasha and this is Puppetry at Home for children with SEN or of a high determination and this is our second session and we're going to be looking at puppets and emotions. So I hope it's been a little while since our first session when we were looking at objects and what is puppetry and using different household things maybe to make your puppet. I wonder how you got on with your uh, Billy Goat's graph story. Um, and if any of you have any questions at all during the webinar, please pop them in the chat box and I will come to them at the end. So we are extremely grateful to the Abu Dhabi Early Childhood Authority for making this initiative a possibility. So, and a reality. So today's session, we are going to be looking at how we can focus on exploring different emotions through puppetry to help develop the emotional literacy of your children. And I've seen from the responses from the webinar question that actually a lot of your children are very good at recognizing emotions and some perhaps a little less so, but we'll have a look at some of exercises to develop emotional literacy. And we're also going to have a step-by-step -step guide for how you can make your own more human-like puppet that you can use at home also to help develop different emotions, but also different scenarios as well. So we'll take a look at that. And then I've got um, some more ideas of how you can use some of your children's perhaps favorite cuddly toys and how you can animate those to help instill empathy and also develop more kinds of scenarios within your home setting. So just a quick bit about myself. Um, I am from a performing and puppeteering background. Um, I trained as a puppeteer and worked for companies like Theatre Rights, which we're going to see a little demonstration from later. And um, I then set up my own theatre company, Telltale Hearts, where we've been using puppetry as an integral way of communicating with early years, young children, and also children with special educational needs. So um, I've also worked for the um, Therapeutic and Specialist Play Department at Manchester Royal Children's Hospital, working with children who are very poorly and who have had to stay in hospital for a very long time, looking at using puppetry and storytelling as ways to brighten their days and also encourage, um, encourage their development. So today's sessions, puppets and emotions, it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, if you came to the first session, you'll see that the way I use puppets and how I use objects is a little bit different from maybe what you might at first expect. Um, so we're going to use a different lens to help understand different emotions and how we feel. Um, we all experience frustration when we can't communicate what we urgently need and young children and certainly children of a high determination are no different in that to any, to any of the rest of us. Emotions are universal to our human experience but we don't always understand exactly how we're feeling and perhaps even more importantly, how others might be feeling too. And sometimes a puppet is a great way to help us unlock that understanding in young children by giving them perhaps a more kinesthetic, that's a more hands-on way of exploring that feeling. So this first demonstration that I'm gonna do for you is something that you can also do at home and you could do it alongside your child or children as well. It's quite a fun activity, even if it might seem a little bit strange at first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking a scarf. It could be any scarf 
that you have at home. This one is mine. And just using the scarf, first of all, I'm just going to try and put different emotions into the scarf. And I'm not doing it initially as a way to try and bring this scarf to life and find its focus like we were doing last time. I'm just going to do it in quite an abstract way and just see if I can find the quality, the quality or if you like the essence of that feeling and see if I can put it into the fabric itself. So just to start off with, seeing as it's a good way to, to get into this, I'm just gonna look at shy and see what might shy be like in this cloth. Ooh, ooh, and you can put sound with it as well. Ooh, 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 ooh. So I'm not especially looking at puppeteering this in a way that you can read a creature or anything. I'm just doing it to try and get that quality of shyness ooh, 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 in that fabric. So that's a little experiment with mm, ooh, shy. And let's see what happens now if I try excited. Mm, woo, 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 woo. So it's a very different quality woo, 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 for excited. And different sounds as well, of course. And the sounds really help me to get that excitement into that fabric. And now let's move to scared. So that's a very different quality, it has elements of shy to it, doesn't it? But it's much stronger. And it's not about trying to scare you, it's actually trying to get that, ooh, ooh, that scary feeling into this, into this fabric. And let's try something again, a little bit different. Let's try silly. This is my favorite, of course. And the last one we're going to look at is frustrated. This is very common, I know, to all of us feeling frustrated right now in the middle of this pandemic. <laughs> So it's very short staccato movements and it's actually really rather cathartic. And another great um, object to use for this exercise is a cushion or a pillow as well. It's another really great one to try and animate and put the energy and that feeling into this cloth. So I realize that's quite abstract. So how on earth does this relate to puppetry? So what we're going to do now is have a look at how to create a more humanoid puppet and then look at ways in which some of this activity can filter through into perhaps more subtle ways when it comes to animating something made of cloth, but that actually looks a little bit more human. Okay, so, and also just in terms of this exercise, it's a really, it, it's a really great one to be able to 
do as I say therapeutically with your children if they are feeling frustrated or if they're feeling overexcited to be able to put it into a material and help give them a vehicle for experiencing some of that emotion as well. Okay, so let's have a look at our video one, how to make a duster dolly puppet. and I'm part of the Big Up team for Theatre Rights and 20 Stories High and I'm here to share some poetry tips for you to do at home. If like me, you've been doing a lot of cleaning and you've got a bit bored, then um, perhaps you can find one of the dusters and uh, Make a puppet out of it instead. It's a good way to get out the chores. So, lay it out flat and then do this. Roll it and 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 roll it to the middle. And then roll it and 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 roll it to the middle. And then for the exciting bit, you chop it and lift it turn it and twist it and spread it and then you just push through the little head there and you pinch around the neck and you've got a little duster dolly a duster puppet and if you want to keep it then all you need is an elastic band or, a moment, <laughs> a hairband. And you can put your hairband around its neck. A little squeeze. You have your little duster dolly. You can then stand up. Sometimes they bend this knee a lot. Watch out for that. But now your little duster dolly can go for a walk. Yeah. Ready? He tends to limp, but it's okay. If you manage to make your duster dolly, look at another share because I've got a few other things you can make. See ya. Whatever you do. Hello, so I hope you enjoyed Sue's demonstration of how to make a duster dolly. And here's my duster dolly. So <clears throat> you can make it out of a duster, but you can also make it out of a tea towel. Um, there are lots of, well, so long as there's a little bit of substance to the fabric. So if it's something too soft, like the fabric I was using in the first exercise, it won't hold its shape enough, will it? No, I'm sorry, it won't. So um, it helps if you have something that's got a little bit more uh, texture to it and can hold its shape a little bit more. So I'm just going to move the camera slightly so that you can see what's going to happen in this next little demonstration. Here we go. And, oh, no, let's go a little bit lower. Here we are. <clears throat> so, what I'm going to explore now is just looking at putting those different feelings like I did with the, with the cloth before, but this time I'm doing it with a more human-like puppet. Okay, so that first one was, um, was shy, wasn't it? So you can see that I've got some of the same intonation and some of the same sort of sound and that turning away actually lends itself really well to the puppet in terms of feeling quite, quite shy, doesn't it? And 
here you can also maybe start experimenting with the odd word or so. So the next one that we're going to look at was um, excited, wasn't it? Excited. Oh, yay! Ooh, yes! Yes! Yay! Woo! Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. So it's got those the carto movements and that excitement, can't keep still, those kind of feelings. And it was there in that material before, but now you can start to see more. Ooh, the swinging legs. Ooh, ooh and that excited feeling. Yeah. Ooh. And let's move on to, ooh. Scared. So scared has that very different feeling, doesn't it? <laughs> Even stronger than shy, of course. And um, what's our next? Oh yes, the silly. <laughs> yeah. Let's just move this down a little bit. That's it. Woo! Yeah! Woo! Woo! <laughs> So that's my silly. I think this one lends itself more to excited than silly, to be honest, but it's always good to try different things and see how they read with the puppet. And the next one then, the last one, should we say, is frustrated. Ooh, let's see if we can get that frustrated feeling. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 it's, oh, oh, it's so unfair. Oh, 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 it's so unfair. Oh, 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 Hopefully, now you can start to see how something that starts off quite abstract with just the cloth can start to read much more strongly when you have an actual puppet that has got focus and you can give it focus. Maybe it's something ooh, that it's scared of or something oh that it's curious about. Ooh, ooh, that helps you to give focus again to the head and to that thinking, but also makes those emotions even more readable because you've explored it first with the fabric. And it helps you to be a little bit braver as to what you might actually do with the puppet. We tend to feel a little bit precious when we pick up a puppet and think, ooh, ooh, ooh I, I, don't want to, I don't want to ruin it. And sometimes, just doing something really strong like <coughs> oh, gives it a, a much, uh, actually gives it quite a lot of life. Um, so that's the Duster Doll Puppet and 
please do watch the webinar again. You can, you've also got that link there on your handouts. So if you want to see Sue's demonstration of how to make your own human duster doll puppet like this or tea towel puppet, then please watch it again to follow all those um, instructions. And now I thought I'd just introduce you to um, brambling to the, to the bird because this is working with a puppet that's more human-like. Um, what happens if we're working with an animal? And as we know, different children relate and respond um, differently. Some really connect with animals far more strongly than they do with humans. So sometimes it's really nice to also be able to introduce other animals um, as, as part of that. So if I just get uh, rambling here, this is... Um, ah! This is Brambling, who um, I worked with at the Manchester Children's Hospital. Let me just bring this down a little for you, Brambling. How are you brambling? I know, does your wing hurt? And uh, are you hungry brambling? So we would get the children to also feed brambling. Here we are, Brambly. Just let me help your head there. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. 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 Is that good? Mama. And as part of it, we also encouraged them to help nurture Brambling, maybe make a little nest for him. They were able to feed Brambling. And then we developed a whole little scenario where Brambling went on a little adventure and made some friends. But I just thought I'd introduce you to Brambling. Bop, bop. Bye. Bop, bop. Because he didn't use words bop, bop, bop. hardly at all. But he had a great connection with the children at the, at the hospital. Um, I think it's really, it's really important when you're working with puppetry and trying to develop emotional empathy, which is so important in our children to help understand not just themselves, but why other people might be behaving a bit the way they, they are. So developing that empathy is really critical and it's really helpful if you can also use a toy or a, a, a soft toy that perhaps your child already has a very strong connection with or as I said an animal that they might also be interested in or fascinated by whether it's a bird or whether it might be a dragon or a dinosaur I don't know but this I just thought I'd introduce you to Ploddington so Here's Ploddington. And um, Ploddington, there's a little bit of a story to Ploddington because um, Ploddington is a rescue bear. Yeah, aren't you Ploddington? Mm, yeah. You see, um, he was found in a ditch. I know, I know it's, it's, it's awful for Ploddington to remember, but um, we were on a family walk and um, my daughter spotted Ploddington had just been thrown out in the ditch. And um, she was really sad to see him in such a, such a bad state. And she immediately wanted to, to rescue him. But we thought that he might belong to somebody else, didn't we, Ploddington? Yeah. And um, 
and perhaps that child might want to come back and try and find it. So we decided to leave it overnight. I'm sorry to say Ploddington, yes. Yeah, so we left Ploddington overnight in that ditch and it was cold, wasn't it? And, and, and you were hungry, weren't you Ploddington? Yeah, and you didn't feel very good, did you? Mm. But we had to do that, you see, because if the child that, that owned you, Ploddington, wanted to find you, then we had to give them a chance to find you, didn't we? But they didn't come back. No, they, they didn't come back. And, and so poor Ploddington, he, he had to spend that night in the ditch, another night in the ditch. But the next day, we went back on the same walk, didn't we? Yeah. And on that walk, there was Ploddington lying in that ditch, all dirty, all, yeah, and all careworn and wet. And, and my daughter picked him up and, and we carried him really gently, didn't we? Yeah. And then we gave you a really good clean, didn't we? We washed, oh yes, you washed all oh, every bit, yeah. All behind the ears as well, because those bits get particularly dirty. And we washed his neckerchief and even his nose and all, oh, and his tummy. And even, even we washed his feet. Yeah. And of course, we washed his <clears throat> bottom. Sorry, Ploddington, but it's important that we get that bit in, isn't it? Yes, yes. Okay. And after we'd cleaned him and scrubbed him and he was all looking feisty and new, he became part of our family, didn't you, Ploddington? Yeah, he did. And so that's the story of Ploddington, our rescue bear. And he still sleeps every night with my daughter. So I just I just asked if you would help me with this webinar because I know that your story is really important to our family and I thought it might be nice to share the story with a few others as well. And it was really good of Ploddington to do that today because Ploddington's actually, he's not really feeling very well, are you Ploddington? No, I think it's all this coronavirus thing that's been going round. It's just, um, well, it's um, it's made you feel a bit poorly, hasn't it? And then you don't know whether you're actually poorly or, or whether it's a little bit in your mind, but he did wake up this morning and he'd got a really, really bad headache. And he, he didn't really want to get out of bed, did you? So I might just let him go back to bed, but, but Ploddington, do you think, do you think it might be good to have a little bit of medicine first? But it, Ploddington, it, it would help me to feel better and maybe sort that headache out. Well, you've got a tummy ache too. Oh, Ploddington, I'm sorry. Well, I've definitely got some medicine that could help you to feel better, yeah? And then you might feel a bit more lively again. Shall, shall I get some for you? Come on then. Let, let's see, here we go. <sighs> ah. um, but Ploddington, it will definitely help your headache if you have a little bit, just try a little bit of it. Oh. <clears throat> Look. All you need to do is swallow it quickly and then it's done, yeah. Yeah, and if you're really good, then maybe I'll find a sweet afterwards to take the bad taste away. Yeah, okay, all right then. Are you ready? Here we go. That's it, swallow, swallow, swallow. That's probably enough, isn't it, for now? Oh dear. Right. Okay. Well, you settle down, Ploddington. Would you like a story? Oh, sorry, he doesn't want a story. Not tonight. Um, what about we watch a little bit of a film? You do you do want to see a little film? Oh, do you know? 
I have got the perfect film for you. It's called The Lost Glove. And actually it's a story that's a little bit similar to your story, yeah? But this one is about a lost glove. So would you mind to play us the video too, the second video, the film of The Lost Glove? And when you're watching it, please watch to see if you can recognize the different emotions of the lost glove through the story. Okay, I'll see you in a bit when we've had chance to watch the film together, Ploddington. Right, video two. Well, Ploddington and I certainly really enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that film, that short film too. And were you able to 
notice the different emotional journey of the lost glove there it'd be wonderful to watch the film again with your child or children and see if they can also oh fantastic thank you someone's responded in the chat box it's really powerful isn't it just from um a lost a lost glove but it's a scenario that i think really reaches out to all of us and there's not a single word spoken in it um, so I really wanted to, to share that film also because it kind of models the experience of, um, of Ploddington. So uh, let me just catch where we, where we are in our webinar. So this gives you a chance to explore some scenarios that might be quite adult led in terms of what I was doing there with Ploddington um, and how he was feeling with the headache that kind of situation so that's one way of approaching um puppetry at home with your own children but also you can you can having having run that little scenario leave it to see if after modeling it if your child picks up the puppet too or plays with its cuddly toy in the same way that you have um, and I think that's some, certainly something that I think because I've been puppeteering things as part of my as part of my world of work, of course, with my own children at home, I puppeteer things all the time um, when particularly in their early childhood. I still do it now, even though they're much older. Um, and it's been a wonderful way to help them um, develop their empathy, but also develop their em emotional understanding. Um, so sometimes what, what I'm really saying is sometimes you might want to lead that scenario by setting something up. And other times it might be that you actually leave the things there and see if your child picks them up to develop their own scenario out of it. Um, and what emotions is it that your children most want to explore through that puppet? Um, I think often people think puppets are a great way to explore the sort of fighting because they often can do that kind of, it's a safe way of doing it, but perhaps that's a way of them exploring what that frustration is. Um, so there's a very real reason in which they're wanting to try and get those, that puppet fight because they actually have a feeling of frustration underneath it um, and maybe helping them explore perhaps excited instead because that has a similar movement to frustrated, excited, um, but it can be put perhaps in, in a different context, in a more positive context and get them exploring a scenario that isn't just about the fighting. So we're coming to the end of this webinar, um, but it wouldn't be a webinar without me leaving you a task for next time. So I wonder if, well, one thing is to definitely watch The Lost Glove together and see what emotions your children recognize from it, just having that shared experience. And another then is looking at, can you do the strange abstract um, scarf activity of putting those feelings into the scarf? Maybe that's something that you can do yourself or you can do with your child um, and maybe develop a scenario either with your um, duster dolly puppet. If you haven't any, any others, you can make that one or using a cuddly toy that, that might um, that your child has a significant sort of relationship with as a way of getting them into um, puppeteering and believing in that in that world of, of the other of the other creature and investing in it. So that's your task really is to see if you can explore one of those scenarios like Paulie Ploddington or the Duster Doll exercise where you're looking at different emotions. Um, and you can try that out without words and then you can try it. Brilliant. Someone's going to be giving Patima. Fantastic. Thank you. That's great to give it a go. And you can use words as well if you're more comfortable with using words. I know it can be quite strange doing it without words at times, but perhaps not. Um, so has if anybody has any questions that you want to put in that chat box, there might be personal questions particular to your family, or they might be around some of the things that we've looked at in this webinar, then pop them in the chat box and I'll do my best to answer them. Just to say on the links in the handout, 
Um, I've got um, some links there. There are links to other theatre rights videos. They've got the Lost Glove film, but they've, other, they've got other activities that you can do at home as well. We also had the Shape um, Groovy extract from their Big Up show. Um, that was in the demonstration in the first session. So that's a, a useful um, website to check out. I've also got the Little Angel Theatre. They've got month long shows which are for free um, online. And they've got some beautiful shows there that you can share with your children too. Um, and there's also the Puppet Theatre in Norwich, which is another place in the UK that's very well known for its puppetry. They commissioned as part of lockdown, um, Roald Dahl's Revolting Rhymes. So some puppetry versions of those different rhymes. And I don't think that, that those um, films are going to be up for too much longer. So if you can check those out. And then there's um, some interesting resources on Oily Cart, who are a company that specialise in making multi-sensory works, not just puppetry, but all manner of engaging the senses because they specialise in working with children of a high determination. Um, and also there's some puppet play guide activities. So if you want to check out those links, please do. And if you have any questions, pop them in the chat box. Um, let me just check that. Great, thank you Fatima, it's brilliant that you're going to give it a go. That's wonderful. Um, I do have a couple of questions that I do often get asked just in case they might have any relevance for you. So one of the questions I often get asked is, you know, my, my child finds it difficult to play and particularly to play with puppets. How can I, how can I encourage them to do that? Well, certainly one way is to look at the, the film links um, that I've shared with you today, but also can you make the activity purpose driven? Sometimes when something's quite open ended um, and play for the sake of play, that certainly doesn't connect with all children, particularly children of a, a strong determination. So if you can give clear outcomes and um, just one emotion to explore, perhaps like in the poorly puppet scenario, ask them, maybe you can model it and get them to provide solutions. So how can we make the puppet feel better um, and get them to problem solve? That might be a way in for a child who's not, um, who struggles more with the imaginative side of play. So they become kind of your assistant in that scenario. So that's one way of um, encouraging them to engage with the scenario by getting their assistance and developing their problem solving. And then they might actually want to be the one that actually gives the medicine or um, does the, or feeds the, um, the puppet creature. So that's one way. And again, as I've said, using um, using a soft toy or using a creature that they strongly connect with, whatever that might be, is a really useful way in. Um, and the second question that I get asked sometimes is, you know, my, my child struggles to empathise. So it's really great to replay scenarios that are from your child's life. So perhaps a scenario that's recently happened, uh, something that's been difficult scenario and maybe you um, want to explore it in another way, that's great ground for using it as a scenario to explore through the puppetry, a bit like I did with Ploddington when we went back through his rescue so that my, my daughter could kind of recognise the different the different things we did to try and help and support Ploddington in that. So that's a very positive example. But I've also used puppetry sometimes when she may have behaved in a way that was contrary to the way I was, I would have wanted her to behave. And I've role played that back with a puppet, with a puppet behaving as she did. And then it, watching her recognition of her own ooh, way of, of handling that situation 
is really fruitful. So it's a really great way of actually using um, using a scenario or an experience that your child has had perhaps between the two of you and kind of when water's under the bridge, re-exploring it either as a positive experience or something where you hope there can be a little bit of instructive instructiveness. I mean, one of them, so it's slightly less abstract and maybe hooked on an actual thing. One was, you know, getting my child to go to bed. Um, and she would, she was, she would struggle to, um, with the whole bedtime routine and always wanted more attention. So being able to play that with a puppet where the puppet was behaving as she was and the puppet was reluctant to go to bed and the puppet needed this and the puppet needed that and the puppet needed water and the puppet needed something else. She started to recognize, oh, <laughs> oh, um, this is what I do. And she wouldn't be able to articulate it. She was very young. But through the modeling of that activity, she was able to recognize those, those behaviors and actually what it's like when you're the one trying to put the puppet to bed because she was the one trying to put the puppet to bed and I was the one puppeteering the puppet. So that's, that's just a, um, a concrete example of, of how that can be used. So I don't see any other questions in the chat box, but what I would like to say is thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed the emotions and, and puppets and do give those different exercises a try at home um, together with your, with your child and children. children and, uh, and you can always let me know how they go in the chat box next week because next week I'll be back and we'll be looking at puppetry and territory, different environments. Um, and this can really help your child if it's if your child struggles with the confidence of being outside, maybe being in social gatherings, in being in unknown places or unknown territory, how you can perhaps use puppetry to help explore that experience beforehand in a safe way at home. So that's what we're going to be looking at next week. And I look forward to joining you then. Thank you very much.